Good afternoon, everybody. It's good to see so many of you here. My name is Max. I'm the Chief Product Officer at Darktrace. I want to talk about how AI, machine learning in its various forms and variations, can be used to be transforming threat detection, threat investigation, and threat containment. Starting with detection, actually, this is what most people use, or most detection engines are built on, it's static detections. That could mean you base your detections on threat intelligence, IOCs, or any signatures and routes, or you might be using threat-trained machine learning. If you walk around the shop floor, everybody and their grandmother is using machine learning these days and AI, but mostly it's supervised machine learning on historic threats. So somebody looks at a million examples of malware, so they can find the million and first new example of malware, but it's always tied down to that training set. So it's better than static signatures and rules, but it's still not helping us with the vast majority of novel threats. And what we are doing, and what I'm suggesting, is flipping the script here. So instead of looking at static detections and maybe supervised machine learning for threat-based detections, there's a ton you can do with anomaly chaining. And I'm not speaking about the 1990s static baseline statistical analysis, but using different layers of anomalies where there's a lot of unsupervised machine learning, clustering, where you can chain these anomalies dynamically together. So the idea is not to say, here's one big anomaly, good luck investigating, but saying, actually, on Danny's device, seeing my colleague in the back there, there's 15 tiny anomalies that taken together make a really interesting incident, potentially. And that gives you a ton of context, and you can even integrate third-party alerts or telemetry as part of that anomaly chain, if you use the right type of unsupervised machine learning, for example. And that leads to significant benefits. So if you do not predefine what you're looking for, you can find novel attacks. When we saw Log4j break, we didn't push down any new detections in our Darktrace customers. It was just another day in the office. So we saw internet-facing devices being hit by attacks. We didn't say, look, it's Log4j. We said, there's a cluster of really weird activity that looks like initial infiltration, network scanning, and beaconing out. And we could react to that in real time without having to push down new detections without detection engineering efforts. The other beautiful thing in this approach of anomaly chaining when you use unsupervised machine learning is the second point here, which for me is almost the most important one, which is self-regulation of alerts. So if somebody is doing a network scan and it's legitimate, the first time you see it in this type of unsupervised machine learning anomaly detection engine, it might say, careful, there's something that looks like a network scan happening, it's really unusual. But then that might be a legitimate business process because, you know, somebody's doing IT admin activity or whatever. So the next time this type of scan happens from that type of entity in the similar or the same fashion, it might not be 100% weird and bad anymore. It might just be 80% weird and bad. So there's a strong element, if you use anomaly chaining, of self-regulating alerts where you do not have to go in every single time and say, that's just an administrator, that's a false positive, don't tell me about that, here's a defeat for the system. I'm not saying it's a silver bullet, but normally in big socks, that is what's breaking your back. The constant security detection engineering where you have to swat down the false positives. Mm -hmm.